what is um wh- why is owen still relevant today why is it a good thing yeah to keep him around and to try to continue to still read him and grasp him yeah i, I think not you know most of us who operate theologically are very much people of our times you know the sermons that you preach the articles that i write todd mm-hmm. uh, even maybe the books that i write they, mm-hmm. they they speak to a particular time i mean i was i was just revised the creedal imperative for a second edition next year it was amazing to me how how many little bits i had to change in that because they were very much specific to things that were going on around about 2010 mm-hmm. uh, and to make the book relevant today I, uh, some sections had to be changed i mean the new perspective on Paul, for example, is not dominating the headlines today yeah. as it was uh, 10, 15 years right. ago. But there are some theologians and there are some works of theology in the history of the church that in some sense demonstrate such a profound understanding of Scripture and such a profound understanding of God and such a profound understanding of the human condition that they transcend their era. Mm-hmm. They're very clearly tied to an era, but they transcend it. I would say Augustine's Confessions, right. for example. You read Augustine's Confessions. Sure, it's set in the, the latter part of the fourth century. But when you read about Augustine's struggles, the distance between my struggles and Augustine's struggles is very small. Mm-hmm. I can mm-hmm. read and learn from yes. his struggles. Uh, I would say uh, John Calvin's Commentaries. Mm-hmm. Uh, of all commentaries produced during the Reformation, Calvin is the man who seems to get in some ways closest to the text with the least amount mm-hmm. of accretions from the world around. It still make his, his commentaries useful today in a way that you know, Martin Butz's commentaries, great as they were in their day, they're not read today. They're, mm-hmm. they're not as useful. I would say John Owen on the theological front and on the practical theological front is one of those men whose works, not all of them, but many of them transcend the immediate day in which they were written. You read Mortification of Sin. He's not talking in terms that make it alien to somebody who isn't a 17th century white male living in England. He's talking in terms that any Christian believer can grasp. Now, some of his illustrations, et cetera, et cetera, are going to be outdated. You know, um, and and, and some of the the polemics in which he engages on occasion are going to be outdated. Sure. But the core of what he's writing is perennial Christian doctrine. Mm -hmm. This is a man who has such a grasp, I think, of the Christian faith that when he speaks on general topics affecting the Christian faith, what he says has significance beyond the moment in which he writes it. 